my first and only beast of the Mesozoic figure. Until my brother got a Taurosaurus because I uh, said that he wanted it in a video and now we, now we have it. So we have two beasts of the Mesozoic figures. And because of the, the difficulties in order to get these, I said that I wouldn't get too many, that these two would be like the only ones we would ever have. So logically I got a bunch more. I have a problem, please send help. I should have known the moment I allowed myself to get old buck that I would eventually give it to Temptation and get a whole bunch more for, um, the Beasts of the Mesozoic. And I'm gonna be honest, it's probably not gonna be the last. Look at this Pendaceratops giving me the side eye like he's so disappointed in me. Now these arrived at a very good time, however, because, uh, I was struggling to come up with some, uh, side content to, uh, upload during vacation, I was worried that I wasn't going to have enough videos to, like, have just ready to be out in case I didn't have time to actually edit videos like I said I would while I was on vacation. And now I have a video where I basically uh, just uh, go over all of these BOTM figures. Let's just begin from smallest first. Okay, so I always knew this guy was going to be small, but man, I didn't know they meant this small. Like, oh my gosh. This thing doesn't even f take up the space in the palm of my hand. It's, it's, it's puny. The reason I got this dude was because uh, just the thought of something this small actually having any form of articulation was just amazing to me. And I just uh, wanted to just have one for my own. Dang it, Sheldon. Get out of here. I just wanted to have one for my own. Like, it's just awe-inspiring. Like, it can move its head. I mean, I'm pretty delicate with how I do things, so it might be harder for me to actually rotate stuff. Like, it can move its head this way, that way, up and down. Actually, good, some good head motion. Probably could play around with it more, but again, I'm scared in case I break it because this thing is delicately tiny. The mouth opens and closes. That's really cool. And it actually, there's some... The teeth are so small that they're almost invisible. The hands go in and out, and it's got like, you can just rotate them as well. They just, it's also just a very nice looking color scheme. The, the body here, oh, it looks like it does to do a bit of shaving there, so I would advise to be careful there. Tail rotates a lot, no bendy wire though. And these tiny legs are actually really easy to swap out. Like, uh, these are actually the standing legs. It came with the sitting legs attached, but I removed them and put on the standing legs because I just, like, I don't know, I just wanted to be able to stand a little taller than I already can. Uh, I also like the way its hands fold together like it's praying. Like, this, this guy is very thankful to be alive. Like, for example, like, this is a Lego figure. Do you know how small Lego figures are? They're like, okay, three fing- they're like three fingers high, at least. And this dude is, like, basically head level with a lego figure that's really cool and for size comparisons just to make this quick well, here it is next to lego sheldon golden lightning mcqueen brio thomas a jurassic world velociraptor that doesn't even fit on the screen with it a lego velociraptor which is like almost double the size of it amanda grunkle stan and molly mcgee absolutely gonna enjoy playing around with this guy a lot more just so tiny and cute. And the best part is he's not gonna take up any space. Easy to pose around. Moving on to something a little bigger, we got the Guan Long. This is something I've wanted for a long time because Guan Long is one of my favorite Tyrannosaurs. Uh, one of my favorite dinosaurs, honestly. If I'm trying to remember, I remember first seeing it in an old documentary my aunt bought for me on a little DVD. And uh, there really isn't that much representation of it, like just anywhere. So the fact that this is Probably one of the few Guanlong toys that I know of existing. There's probably like a Slyche toy, but either way, they never showed up in Toys R Us, and I don't order Slyche online or anything. So this is probably the only Guanlong toy I will ever get. Unless Mattel makes another one, but mm, there's no point in me getting a Mattel version now that I have this one. In fact, as you can see, I have two. Uh, funny story, there was a bit of a mix-up miscommunication uh, between uh, the ordering, and uh, I accidentally ended up getting... Uh, two of these before and it was too late to fix it by the time we realized what happened. So uh, yeah, now I have two Guan Longs and uh, honestly uh, that's uh, not a bad thing because uh, nothing wrong with having uh, that because I have like twos of a lot. There's a lot of dinosaurs that I have that come in twos. Like these two baby Brachiosauruses, for example. Two of these Ornitholestes. Two Tropiognathus brothers. Two many blues. And even the French chef Allosaurus uh, had a twin. In fact, I think he had two twins. He was a trip. He was part of a trio. 
but we had no need for him for having three of him, so we got rid of those two. So yeah, two Guanlongs, which is absolutely great because I absolutely love this little guy. He's a uh, articulation is also like fun to play with. You know, I don't. I'm not gonna go into explaining about what about the detail or the anything like the, the articulation and whatnot because you already know. You can just watch Andy's dinosaur reviews or uh, Dino Scream reviews, and you'll get basically all the information you need about these guys. Who knows? Maybe I'll repaint one or most likely not because again these are expensive and I'd rather keep them in the way they are their truest form. Now for size comparisons here's Lego Sheldon with a lot uh, a lot bigger than Sheldon honestly. Velociraptor Blue which is about the same size. In fact Blue is a, just a bit chunkier than uh well, I bet they weigh the same. This guy's... Actually, this guy's lighter, honestly. So yeah, blue is bigger. Here's a Lego Velociraptor. A Lego Abomination. Golden Lightning McQueen. Brio Thomas. Amanda. Grunkle Stan. And Molly McGee. Absolutely love this little dude. Now let's look at the... Can I even turn this without you falling over? If I go very slowly. His balance is okay. He seems okay. Man, he is also very, very thin. But I'm not going to test it too much. So, yes, this is the Changesaurus, which is honestly one of the, probably the best, qu highest quality figure of the bunch. Like, for starters, the paint job is just gorgeous. But that goes for saying for any Beast of the Mesozoic figure, but then it's like, this one just feels extra gorgeous. And the, the, but the, the real high selling feature is the points of articulation. Like, you can just go all the way that way. You can go all the way that way. You, know, you can even, it just feels so freeing. Like... Most Beasts of the Mesozoic figures from the two that I have felt very restrictive on how much I can do with them. But this, oh my gosh, I feel, look at that! This one can point all the way up. I can just make him go flat down. He can, he can just go, ah! Oh wait, that, that's not very, as wide as I was expecting. Granted, it is recommended that you put this thing attached to a base in order for like the best stability on it. Otherwise, it could topple over quite a bit. So that, that is unfortunate with these types of like uh, Beast of the Mesozoic figures that bi bipe like bipedal creatures require a stand in order to be displayed. In fact, with that in mind, I feel like the Hammond collection has a bit of an advantage. Yes, those feet are uh, ridiculously big, especially in comparison to these guys, but uh, at least the Hammond collection has a lot of articulation. Like these guys can both look up. But that guy can also just look up and just scream way louder than the cha the poor Chanja. Like the the Chanja's mouth barely goes any wider than that Barry on. It's like ah, 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 ah. like a Hammond Collection figure it just gets points for stability because you're, it's unlikely this dude's gonna fall over in comparison to this dude who re really requires a stand in order to focus. But I guess that's the sacrifice I have to get much smaller feet in exchange for those uh, cartoon boots that everyone just keeps complaining about. In fact, the whole reason I got the, the Changesaurus is like, one, it's beautiful, and I really like this one, but it's also because uh, then I can really compare two dinosaurs, uh, both highly articulated dinosaur figures of similar size, and really compare them together. Anyway, back to comparisons, there's Lego Sheldon, Golden Lightning McQueen, Brio Thomas, the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus who really doesn't fit into the frame here. In fact, I think he would just block the screen if he was to just take up the space. The Amber Collection Dilophosaurus, which actually is quite, almost like the... Well, it's, a, it's still smaller, but it is fairly similar size. Amanda, Grunkle Stan, and Molly McGee. Also, side note, I did skip all of the unboxing and uh, putting in the tail because I knew that would just make this video way too long. Side note on the tails, uh, th these tails were actually pretty easy to put on this time because I just soaked it in hot water for like a whole minute and then I squeezed it in. It was no problem. The only one I had trouble with, uh, we haven't seen it yet because uh, everyone else was just pretty easy. Now we get to a big boy, someone so big that I basically had to clear up a lot of space just so I could uh, get him, get the camera to zoom in on him. The Bista Hiverser. Now I do have the display leg on because I know that if I try, it's it's not recommended that you leave him without the leave him standing without the display legs. Otherwise, I don't know the joints will give in or something. So I'm just keeping these ones on because I'm not really playing around with them that much yet. And I hear that these bigger, the bigger the dinosaur, the harder it is to articulate them. That's what I understand. The Changesaurus has the best articulation by far so far. This guy is probably a little bit lacking on that because he can't really look left, can't really look right, and can't really look up at all. And down is not really an option either. Like, can he look down at all? I don't think so. Well, this guy's got, there's like one, 
he got size. Like, that's a Changesaurus, who's already a pretty sizable figure, but this guy's like already super taller than him. And then second of all, it's just like, uh, man, this thing is just a gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Like most beasts in the Mesozoics have like very uh, extravagant and just paint everywhere. Like there's like almost no blank space anywhere. But this guy, this guy's got quite a few, just, just a few simple color, but it works so well because the colors are so striking. The black working with the red, transitioning to that gray underneath. And then the face, it's got a big blue eyes over the usual yellow ones. It's got this goofy expression that most uh, animals would have when you look them straight in the face. It's got these nice looking lips with his teeth just showing up a little bit and the nice lovely purple inside the mouth. Just, a, just This is just such a very beautiful looking figure. There's really no, I mean yeah sure the articulation is compared to like other the other dinosaurs in this uh, that came with this the articulation on this one is definitely the worst. So uh, anyway let's just do some size comparisons to other stuff like there's my old buck my first and probably still my favorite of the Beast of the Mesozoic figures. The Indoraptor, who's on a bit of a similar scale of the Bistahiverser. The Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus, who is actually pretty sizable with this. Like, if I just compare this to the Changesaurus, it's sort of like the Ceratosaurus is kind of an in-between between the two. Like, uh, Bistahiverser is a little bit bigger, Changesaurus is a little bit smaller, and Ceratosaurus is smack dab in the middle. Eventually, I do plan to do some sort of, like, uh, Hammond Collection versus Beast of the Mesozoic kind of video to find out who is the best articulated dinosaur series, even though it's very clearly who the real winner is. Brio Thomas, Grunkle Stan, who is absolutely dwarfed, and Molly McGee, who is looking at the wrong direction. And of course, do you, the, the main reason to get a Bista Herverser, other than the fact that it looks so beautiful, is because it pairs up very nicely with the Pentaceratops, which it's, it's, its artwork is literally it trying to attack the Pentaceratops. And here is the big boy himself, who is so big, oh my gosh, he, he barely fits into the camera. Now I know the Ceratopsians, oh my gosh, he's so heavy, I can't even turn the turn table. It's a real struggle to turn that turntable, what the heck? Now I know the Ceratopsian series is old news, but I, Pentaceratops is my favorite of the Ceratopsians, and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to get this Goliath. Now I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't too pleased with the articulation on the Taurosaurus. It is nice a bit, but it also feels a little bit limited. I mean, I guess the head is nice, but the legs, it doesn't feel like there's much I can do with this one. However, this Pentaceratops feels a whole lot better to work with. Like, I can leg him look left, up, down. It just feels like he has a bigger range of motion with that head of his. Oh no, the Changa fell. It has a very nice range of mouth. It looks like, it, I, this is the only one where it looks like the mouth can be fully closed. And then when it opens up, it's not a huge range, but that still feels really nice. The head is huge. Look at, oh my gosh, look at that posability. That's so good. This is like the best head of any Ceratops. You're like, oh, but come here for a second. I know you're staring at the fallen Changa. You have good head articulation as well. In fact, all the Ceratopsians do. But I guess it's because this guy's head is so big. It just feels like it's really moving. It's probably not any different, but it's just that head really makes the big difference, man. The legs also feel better on this one. Like I can actually, I haven't played around with the front legs too much, but these back legs, they're so, they're actually quite loose which is not a problem for quadrupeds because, again, they have four feet supporting them as opposed to two, which makes it easier to balance them, which is why they don't come with a stand or anything. And even the tail was a lot easier to put in compared to the Taurosaurus, and that was mostly because I knew what I was doing this time. Had to heat up the inside of the tail with hot water for like a minute, heat up his butt for like a minute as well, and then it went in. Not that much issue, even though he did have the hardest tail to put in, but oh my gosh, I can't get over how good that articulation is. Oh my goodness. Look at this, look at that, I can go, ah, I can just make him go, ah, look at that, that's so good. Anyway, here it is compared with the Ceratosaurus, who is finally looking outmatched by something. The Taurosaurus, who's got a squeeze in next to him. It's actually, this Pentaceratops, I know the body's a lot smaller than it, but still, look, that head just really makes it look bigger than the Toro, even though it's not. Here is a bigger, yet so much lighter, uh, Habitat Defender Triceratops, like these guys. I mean, yeah, the Triceratops is very thin, but it's like, this is crazy, it's huge, but it's so light comparison because Mattel toys are hollow on the inside. These guys are like solid plastic, so of course they're gonna weigh a whole lot more. And my brother's obsessed with stuff like this. Here it is next to a Hammond Collection T-Rex because he really likes to see herbivores defend themselves against car- Wow, I can't even fit the T-Rex in this. Okay, let me just move up there, you can see. You can see just how big that Pentaceratops is compared to that T-Rex. This T-Rex is just gaining more enemies 
Here it is next to a fairy who is also unable to fit into the screen. Oh, actually, this is pretty high level, honestly. Here it is next to poor Pratt, who is just getting smaller and smaller with every new addition I get. He's also not in the next repaint video. I'm sorry, buddy, except not really. There's just other dinosaurs who are cooler to paint than you, especially with this guy now existing. Brio Thomas, Ultimate Valtriek, Runkle Stan, and Molly McGee, who look absolutely puny. So yeah, that's my Beast of the Mesozoic collection so far. It has grown a lot with this single shipment. And uh, yeah, it's definitely not the last shipment. Just wait till the Beast of the Cyberzoic reveals a whole bunch more figures and I cave in and uh, just uh, start getting those as well. Again, I have a problem. Please send help. So it appears my brother also has some things to say about the Pentaceratops, as this is his favorite out of the bunch. Here are the obvious reasons why it's better than the previous Penta we have. Good old Pratt. Poor Pratt. So shocked to see a better version of himself. And so sad. For starters, Pratt here, well, has a dull color scheme in, compar in comparison to what this new Pentaceratops Well, that's has. not fair. I'm gonna give him a repaint. I said as I continued to push him off for other repaints. Oh yeah, he has real real skin thanks to the textures on his uh, scales. And not to mention, he has more weight to him. To my surprise, he's not that big. He doesn't really surpass Pen uh, Pratt that much in size. He said as Pratt was completely blocked by the view of it. I'm talking about the mass of his body. I mean, his body is he said as Pratt is able to be lifted easily with one hand. Okay, what I meant to say was, our new Pentaceratops, who we have yet to name, surpasses Pratt in terms of weight and tall and height. Another obvious reason, his frill is solid and so are his horns. I do not know why Mattel made Pratt's frill and horn so soft. Well, that's because it's like you can just bend, a child can just grab it and bend him and warp him if they want to. Mm. That's why. Also because it's easier for the action feature. It's, it's lighter that way. I suppose so. Well, of course, that does mean that Pride is constantly holding his head low while this guy can hold his head high. There's this other button that allows Pratt to uh, bend a little, but it only allows his body to bend in one direction. Oh, it's like the Elasmosaurus all over again. On your right! I said on your right! <laughs> but I can only look to the left! <laughs> Whereas our new Pentaceratops is more articulate. He can look anywhere he wants. Do you think this new Pentaceratops is a little bit intimidated, or is he still not not gonna go down without a fight? I don't think he, like, honestly, he's got an eye. I've noticed that his eye is like, he doesn't, like, this guy's looking straight forward at him, but that guy's just like, no, nah, I don't really care. I'm gonna look in the opposite direction. Oh, so he's basically someone who gets distracted? I don't know, I don't really, I don't really have a personality yet. Oh, he doesn't know what's happening though. Oh gosh, he's dying. Oh, Thomas is dead. Pratt is dead. Lightning McQueen is dead. I will say this though, the only thing that Pratt surpasses uh, the new Penta in is, well, he uh, at least he has a wider frill in comparison to uh, the new Penta. That looks pretty white to me. Oh, right. On second thought, yeah, Pratt, uh, I guess, the only thing there's that... only one play the best the best way to describe them you'll sit there until you're ready to be repainted oh, yeah. S -s sit I, I know you don't want to but sit no no you have sit stay bad bad pr stay hey guys thanks for watching the video from beginning to end if you want to see more subscribe to the channel and join the Zen reborn community see you in the next one Bye-bye! Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.